Hey there, rulers. Welcome back after a long week of Force of Will to this show that's not the teacher's lounge, but as instead, all the students have gone home. We got to prep for the rest of the week. It's time for lesson planning. Welcome to episode one, to be or not to Adam Brawley. Um, it's a little bit of a Shakespeare lesson today. This is our new show. We're trying it out. It is our possible replacement for the Teacher's Lounge. We have heard and talked to you guys about something a little bit more competitive. So the purpose of this is to have two players who today are going to be Josh Patton rocking the Leneth Adam Brawley 12 Apostles list, who is our focus for today. And the ghost of Derek Muguneza over there in the corner playing his Dark Alice list. His uh, This is a matchup with the Schrodinger combo that we have kind of expected to see and people have been talking about a lot. So we figured this is something people might want to see. So what we're going to do here, kind of the framework of what this show is going to be moving forward, is we're going to jump in and look at what the deck list looks like. Uh, the Adam Brawley list, kind of just a core kind of breakdown real quick about what the deck's trying to do, what it looks like. Then we're going to jump into a game watching Josh so we can see his hand. Just a quick, um, not a quick, but we'll be pausing along the way to like ask questions and talk about play lines about for this specific matchup, how this deck tries to beat Dark Alice, how it tries to beat its opponent. And so then at the end of the kind of hour, we'll kind of take a look at the deck list again, see how things went in the, the match and say, like, if we were going to make tweaks, what would we make? If we were going to try to sideboard some things specifically to try to help in this matchup, what would we do? Uh, and then we'll close it out from there. If you guys like this idea, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Help us know that this is something that we should keep kind of do. Do uh, keep going. Keep trying to do. <laughs> uh, and then um, also, if you want to suggest a matchup for future episodes of lesson planning, go ahead and join that member button down below. We're going to be setting that up this week so that members can start making suggestions for what kind of matchups they would want to see here, as well as what players you might want to see playing those lists to get their insight. We'll try to tap into that player base as well. So without further ado, Josh, you got the list ready for us? Yes, go I do. Go ahead and That's good start. Just start sharing and we'll jump oh, over I to your screen. Share. I do want to say before we get started, welcome to our newest member, um, Toby Gaffney, Toby. joining in. Your curriculum has restarted here at Ruler School. Welcome back. Okay. Toby. I want to Toby. try to make it Toby. so that you're not. Toby. Can you make it so that you're not streaming, so that it's actually just sharing your screen? We don't need to see sure. our faces. I just want to be able to see the full, like, click on just you. Uh, Unless it's not going to Why leave. do I? Should be a thing down below that says share your screen. Oh, just... Yeah, no, I see that. I, it's like streaming is the only option. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Applications. Yeah, I got untap. So it wasn't just Patton being a boomer. It was just literally Discord. Be Discord being a boomer. <laughs> Dude, that's like, what it was. Legit, though. <laughs> You'd totally be a boomer there. Um, yeah, no, I literally don't have another option here. Anybody else can see. Maybe okay. I can stop doing to... my camera. Oh. No. Nah, here we go. Still... We'll just watch your stream. It's all good. We got it. We're here. Can, you, can you focus in on just the stream part? I can try. Okay, cool. Sure. Easy enough. I don't know, guys. We're we're trying it out. I'm gonna try it out. No, this works. If, right. if you get the same kind of screen that I've got, that's fine. Yeah, this is good enough. I'll try to kind of increase right. the size here so that people can see it a little bit well, better. Ladies and gentlemen, we're learning. <laughs> this is what yeah. we do at this school. Is, this is what our tool. Yeah, we're we're planning. <laughs> Remember, this is not us teaching the lesson. It's doing the lesson planning. So we're still trying to yeah, figure out all the kids. after school. Come on, guys. <laughs> Truth. So, Josh, why right, don't you so, walk us a little bit about Lenith? So, this is the Lenith list that I ran through the gauntlet over the weekend, but then we made some modifications after slamming the deck for four hours. We kind of knew uh, kind of the direction we wanted to go with it. Plus, we p and uh, what kind of where their success was. Um, so, we kind of rebuilt from there. So, main thing, uh, we go four caduceus and then four of the velsavare field so this is just eight this is eight copies of your uh cad because you absolutely need it um the whole deck runs on cad and so eight copies of that is awesome the secondary so thing 
the secondary thing with this addition uh, is that it turns your 12 apostles or it turns all your will to be able to do 12 apostles with whatever color you want. So it allows you to stay consistent on red, white. Uh, we run one of Genesis just because Velsavari can search for either. Um, the deck doesn't rely on Genesis, but you know, having a target when you just want to get this out on the field is fine. A little bit of deck thinning. If you open up with it, sure, that's fine too. So uh, two Morning Angels. This is a, this is a tech, I think, just for the meta. And we'll talk a little bit about that after we get to the 12 Apostles because there's uh, kind of some play lines there that are really nice. But uh, we'll go to the most important spell in the entire deck, and that's uh, Resistance. So Resistance of the 12 Protective Deities, this is the card that makes this car go. Um, if you do not have this car, then this deck kind of struggles at this point. Um, so in terms of counterplay, uh, I think something that we've really learned through testing against Lenith, uh, your Dark Alice Smiles, your Kaguyas, your Defense Stances, they are for this spell. Anything else is a bait. Um, so it's not the Caduceus. It's not anything else. It's literally this spell. If you can answer this spell four times, you will most likely win the game. So outside of that, uh, Ramilla, uh, this cat is awesome. Back in the day for Brunhild when we were playing... Um, we were playing Messenger of the Sun, and we were getting all the draw power off of the runes, and that's how that deck worked. Uh, this is very similar here. The draw power that you get off of this cat is fantastic. You've got a spell that recurs that draws you a card as well. Um, in the event you don't have 12 protective deities, you got one of this on the field, you draw Dig 2. It's it's perfect. It's a perfect spell. Uh, Light and Raisin Revive, this is uh, something added... Um, early in the testing because uh, this is just still a fantastic card. Um, there wasn't a lot of beefy stuff that came uh, that would push this out of the meta. This still answers just about everything at instant speed that you're looking to answer at instant speed. Um, so that's that. I always do a one of Magic Arrow. Um, if I'm playing uh, if I'm playing Ramilla, this one of Magic Arrow is a great mana sync. Uh, one, uh, one mana draw card. And it goes with the Mage Arts, so you can play it with your Caduceus, you can play it with your Open Will. This is just a fantastic card. Once you get it, this is like the Nitrous. Like, this is just how you get through the rest of your deck to find that lethal. So going from there, two Yggdrasil's Grace. Um, this is a fantastic card. Pairs with uh, Nidhogg, uh, but gets cluttery. Uh, that's why it's only at a two. Like, it's a really powerful card, but because the deck relies on you having one of these beefy things on the field first, this is like step three in a combo and you don't want to be like loaded on step threes you know so that's why i always keep this at a two dark alice is a fantastic dig card I'll leave that as a two crystallization is a recent ad it's another one drop answer uh when we were playing and i ended up losing to dark alice and i lost to the swords master um i found out just real quick i just don't have an answer for a big body like that, you know, there was just really no answer in this deck for that. No banishing, no targeted removal outside of three drop and less. So this was a mandatory add to just handle some beefy stuff. Uh, Josh, quick question, if I can interject yep. for a moment. Very interested as to why you picked Crystallization over Schrodinger's Cry when you have the Mage Arch synergies with Caduceus. So Schrodinger's Cry is currently in the sideboard. Okay, um, makes sense. I like Schrodinger's Cry. Uh, Schrodinger's Cry relies on somebody to attack uh, or somebody to block or something in those ways. Um, crystallization, I don't have to, right? So this is also an interaction with Sigurd. Um, if at any event, rupt the combo, um, you know, when Sigurd enters before Alter comes in, any way of killing it sets them behind that turn, right? Even though you're just putting it in the grave, you're disrupting that initial combo because there's no Alter on the field. Uh, sure. That's a good answer for that. It's not tapped. But then also, I the loss that I suffered to Dark Alice, I ended up getting shot by 20 Dark Crystals. And the Swordsmaster oh, wow. just literally never tapped. And so I was like, I'm staring down a 15-15 I can't deal with. Uh, so a a at the end of the day, this just seemed to be the better call. Schrodinger's Cry is in the sideboard for backup. Good call. So I'm running 11 12 Apostles. It's four Adam Brolies, four Ouroboros, and three Nidhogg. 
This is vastly yeah. different from what you saw in the gauntlet. Um, I was running Ziz. I was running. Uh, I was running Behemoth. Um, very good cards, but I felt very scattered. Uh, the most powerful stuff in the uh, the game, every game that I played that I won with relative ease was off the back of a Nidhogg, right? And then every game that I got clapped, I was sitting with fossils that I couldn't do anything with, right? So Ouroboros is just a fantastic two-card kill your opponent if they don't have an answer. Something you can open up with, and it's absolutely fine. If you don't have resistance, this card gets into your stranger deck, right? So this is like something else that I want to be trying out here. Oh, sure. Adam Broly... <laughs> On the other hand, Adam Broly is a fantastic um, disguise. It's a uh, oftentimes on turn two, uh, and especially against alter decks or something along those lines. If I tap out, if I tap out, and all I have is a Caduceus on the field, um, if I have resistance and Adam Broly in hand, effectively I'm actually sitting on one will, but my opponent doesn't know it. So this is where the one drop interactions of like crystallization or uh, magic, uh, not magic arrow, or is my other one drop? Dig to show's grace, stuff along those lines. Um, morning angels. This is where um, like if I had a resistance and an Adam Broly in hand, I could disguise my morning angel, and they could feel real safe with like a uh, tap out for uh, what is it? The um, Raya play. And then I can like snipe the Sigurd uh, because they don't see that I'm going to stand up one will, right? Yeah, so nice. there's a little bit of baiting there with Adam Broly that I really like. And so that's why Adam Broly's at a four of. And I'm always looking for those one drops that I can kind of take advantage of with um, with the untapping there to kind of disguise my plays. Sweet. So that's the main list. We're running plenty of white, uh, plenty of red white. We're running eight of those. And then the other ones are a Heaven's Rift and a Scorch Bales. My theory on this is always to make sure you are on red and white by turn two. You never want to screw yourself out of red, white by turn two. So yep, that's whatever off stones you're doing, one of them's got to be red, one of them's got to be white. Oh, sweet. Well, let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'll have you start the game. Derek, you good to go on Dark Atlas? I'm good to go. Sounds good. Okay, Josh, start it up. And let us dig oh, in here. Not the gauntlet anymore. Definitely not the gauntlet. Go check out the gauntlet. What are we? Uh, what are we on? Uh, this is lesson planning. Lesson right? planning. Lesson planning. I yeah, I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Here. I more he hello to the twenty-two people we got hanging out with us. Twenty-two people. People That's liking. Beautiful. People liking this. Okay. So again, as we're breaking down here, we're we're going to be focusing on on the the play lines uh, that are f from Lenneth's perspective. Um, so we're just having Derek kind of primarily functioning as a pilot in this match. Hence, um, why I hope that Derek isn't looking at the hand, although we're going to be talking at the. Do you hand. need to uh, deafen? Uh, deafen? No, you you can you could be fine. You can talk about it. And everything okay. else. Sure. But we're going to be talking about kind of why. Um, Leneth is playing certain ways, things that you can kind of look out for or try to um, take read on when you're doing this. Um, so oh, first thing, shit. is this the wrong version? Yeah. This is the, I, I got to keep this one because of the old. Uh, so I got version. one more game. Hold on. We yeah, got I'm looking at a years and a beam. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's uh, right click the deck and yeah. continue. Change deck. Yeah. 2.0. Jared Arquette, is there an official New Frontiers ban list? Technically, yes. Currently, there are no cards banned in New Frontiers. <laughs> official. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. <laughs> wow, this guy. I mean, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me yeah, I'm wrong. wrong. You're not incorrect. There are cards that we wish were banned in New Frontiers. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but as it, as it stands right now, the ban list has zero cards on it. Italy just announced after one tournament that they added a card to their unofficial cluster ban list. Okay, Josh. So talk us through back. talk us through this hand. Kind of what what are things that you're kind of wanting to ship away? This looks like a pretty <sighs> gas hand, in my opinion. It does. It does look like a really gas hand. Um, except that uh, I'm going against the black deck, and so uh, Dark Alice Smile is probably what I need to be kind of looking at here. Sure. Um, so. I can assume that I will not be keeping this card. 
Okay. Sure. I will not be, uh, the resistance will not stay in my hand. Right. So I kind of want to build around that. Um, so Vel Savari is for sure a keep. I'm going to actually pitch the Broly and one of these Ouroboros. And the reason why I'm going to keep the Ouroboros when he takes this, um, and I still get my Caduceus, uh, I will still have the ability to go into my stranger deck without the resistance that's, there. That's a good but line. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to draw into another uh, Caduceus or another Veil, because depending on what my opponent feels my play lines are, Dark Alice Smile is probably going to rip one of those out. Yeah, right? for so sure. I would like to sit on duplicates. Two. Duplicates are always nice, for sure. Absolutely. I would also have liked a cat in my opening hand. Going first, I want turn one cat because I literally don't have a turn one play outside of that. So pass me. Jalen, tell Jalen right. to get. Tell Jalen to come watch the stream. Is this yes, Derek? Derek. <laughs> Jalen, come watch the stream. <laughs> Derek Jalen and I were talking earlier and he was he said that you're the best player on our team and I I, I told him I said no I'm the best player in the world. <laughs> Strong words. Oh right. <laughs> go ahead and call us down here. Um uh, so Derek. We're definitely gonna start off with uh Yggdrasil. Oh, okay. I find my regalia. Interesting. All right. Yeah, so this is actually really good for me because what ends up happening is like uh, I have a very easy time handling one drops as yeah, uh, for sure. as Lenith. As the Lenith, so yeah. Especially anytime my my opponent decides to go turn one Yig, I feel completely fine because I naturally handle it within my curve. Sure. Unfortunately for me, draw. Yeah. Uh, tap call stone. Uh, so here, I don't ever run a. I don't ever run an issue with um, playing either the Caduceus or the Vel Savari. Wouldn't so, in my opinion, uh, I know I'm against the discard deck, but um, knowing that I have basically six other copies of something with a Caduceus, I'll end up actually playing the Vel Savari. Yeah, here it's also deck one it, of those Caduceus. It's also deck thinning. Deck, yeah, deck but, thinning worried about losing yeah this because you can also yeah, you can also talk about too. yeah you're you can also talk about in this situation like you're sitting on white black um well, i don't something's happening with this oh he's always oh, rfging floating the will and then rfging it um yeah. so um you can also talk about like you know you're going up against a black white deck you don't know what other colors are in there but black white by themselves doesn't really have anything to be able to stop that addition trigger so again in this situation it's a deck thin it possibly projects to your opponent that maybe you don't have regalia in hand so now that they've seen the regalia maybe they're trying to change their play or, or something else like that it also makes it so that his um play lines potentially with smile get a little bit more awkward because then it's like okay you can smile away the spell but i have another caduceus in hand so that's two for more free triggers and possible draw power like it makes things interesting there yeah so essentially i have uh i have a fun play line that i can do here i can either hold up the orboros um to like a dark alice smile line and then he'd have to answer the orboros um I, I know that he's probably be going to be coming for the resistance. So with the Ouroboros in hand, I think I'm going to go that play route. But then there's also this other one here where I could actually just slam the Adam Broly right now, untap a will, and go right into the Shiruin and go 16 damage on turn two. That's mm. uh, tapping out. Uh, Alice isn't going to do anything to me. Yeah, that's um, a, yeah. I agree. That's not really the situation where Dark Alice... Currently. If I was staring at a green stone, I might see it differently. Yeah. But right sure. now, I'm going to assume this is not a Sigurd deck. It's probably a Sigurd deck, though. So. <laughs> yeah, but, but even yeah. but even if it is, like, he's going to have to take time to set it up there. And the idea of pushing... Having put, answered the Yig, yeah. Yeah, I think putting putting the pressure there, I think, probably would have been the smarter play. Now, so, see, now you see the green. Um there is also definitely like because the problem there is you know now you're gonna stare down whatever he's doing here. Um, I'm gonna energize out the regalia. I think there's justification in, in knowing that we what we've known with 
So I have a question for you, Josh, at this point, seeing, sure. seeing the regalia trigger, right? Knowing what we know about yeah. Dark Alice and the fact that we have seen, we're in New Frontiers, and the fact that we mm -hmm. have seen that, um, we have seen that uh, Unknown Mother Goose can pay for fairy tales. Is there a world mm -hmm. here where in response to, um, in response to this casting of Mother Goose, we're going to go ahead and do resistance now so that we don't walk into a Kakia. Uh, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. Um, yeah, no, because I'm trying to think. My other thought is, world. my other thought is that there's a world here where, if that's the plain line you think of, knowing what the, with what you have in your hand, the raise and revive, there might be a world where you um, for, kind of almost force a tap out from Derek by end of turn <laughs> raise and reviving the mother goose, because then he either like he flashes in the Kagia, but that taps him out for the turn, and you get to go to your turn completely safe, or it resolves and you steal two will from Derek going into your turn at six will, right? Yeah. So like that might be the better play. No, I actually uh I think I'm I think I'm with your first play line there. Um doing the resistance now with only the one will. Um cuz then like what does Akagia threaten and he has to answer Akagia a 20 doesn't really threaten anything. Right. So yeah, no, I'm actually I'm with that play line. I like that one. So before before the uh Mother Goose resolves, we're going to go ahead and snag this back to hand. Mhm. Mm Because like three wills, not a lot. No. And now you're staring down at 2020, right? Yeah, and he's got to answer it. And you uh, also have a resistance in hand still. Like you get to like, you get to use the resistance to kind of like punk puncture a hole. Um. Yeah. To try yeah, to get. I, have to. I mean, there's there's a lot of damage in my hand. That's for sure. But I mean, right now, I, the simple play line I'm looking at is uh, uh, swing, declare block, light, and re raise and revive whatever the blocker is. Yeah, right, right, and that you know, and that and that again is it, like if he has a like that's what I'm saying. Like that position feels good to me because we're going to three will maximum for Derek, right? So like the the three will maximum for Derek is play a blocker now, or hold up will to like do nothing this turn and then have to answer the Ouroboros and leave you with a free path to do whatever the hell you want when he's yeah, already, when no, he, honestly that was uh that was super smart to play when, around the Kaguya when he's already on the back foot and this is something like you know uh, like Kagi is the biggest card ever and um remembering we, it's a fairy tale too. remembering that it's a fairy tale uh enter trigger yeah enter trigger is fine all right get two light and two dark uh, end of turn, Vigor, get a Darkness Gem. Okay. And we'll pass to you. Draw. Mm -hmm. Cover. Uh, uh, part of me says even before I call a stone here. Yeah, I think you just, just I think you just push. Uh, float two lights. Attempt to cast Dark Alice. With two floating white? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, enter. Mm. Yep. Hold. Uh, I think you do something there in response. Why? Um, because you make it so... I think, again, I'm all about this, like, not allowing will efficiency, right? So... Sure. And, like, card advantage-wise here. So, like, here we know we have a floating white-green, and that's all we have access to. Uh, mm -hmm. He hasn't declared block yet um mm -hmm. and he's not gonna block with the dark alice uh or, or like he has to try to block with the dark alice so yep. right now before he gets to see what other cards are i think you but he can't kaguya you here i think you resistance in the adam brawley to kill the dark alice but what's he gonna stop me with he just has to block you it doesn't yeah, matter but then the adam brawley comes in like what's gonna stop the adam brawley play well, no. What I'm saying is, again, this is me. This is me saying like you want to. Nothing's going to stop the Adam Brawley play here. What I'm saying is, you do it now to force him so that the only things he can do are draw discard, draw discard, and then he doesn't have a blocker 
So now he has to have drawn a removal spell. And even then it taps him out further and you're still sitting on the brawly play to push in for lethal. Like, I don't know. I mean, that's I my, think, that's uh, my thought. I mean, but again, I, no. could, I mean, like I could be completely misguided. I mean, I'm fine. Cause like if he ends up, if he draws two cards and like, he's got five cards in hand, he can easily pitch to like me getting rid of the Stark Alista that he pitches to isn't like a good, cause then something else could come in. Right. So like there's sure. a shadow X, there's shadow X. Oh, sure. Still, like, there's that's, plenty of other that's cards fair. that can come in and block. So I'm gonna wait till declare block before I decide. Fair enough. Block, and that's why and that's something. why we that's why we walk it through. You're right. I wasn't thinking about Shadow X in that moment. And that is the correct play. Uh, I always think of Shadow X. Uh we'll discard this yay. Draw. Uh, Let's discard this swing of board. That's the box. Block's good? Uh, yeah, no, block's not good. He's got green, white up. Yeah. Or, sorry, he's got green, white, black up. One white floating. Uh, we'll go ahead and tap. Uh, produce two will here. Go. Spend the white and one. Cast the resistance. Oh, that's clever, Josh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So for the stream, basically, um, uh, resistance says that you just have to use will from Caduceus to do it. Caduceus produces two will. So if you have active stones, you can actually get two resistance plays back to your hand off the same caduceus if you just use one will at a time yeah that's really smart so the other thing here that i'm what it resolves okay adam burley in her inner trigger Cover six to Dark Alice, six to you, plus six to me. Draw card. God, that's a lot. <laughs> Does a lot of things. And then 20 coming in. 20. And that's lethal. Game over. Yeah, no answer. Nope. All right. Show me the Kagi in hand, Derek. Yeah, do it. Show me the Kagi in hand. Boom! Told you. Told you that, that play. Okay. Yeah, run. it would have been uphill from there. Yeah, it definitely sure. would have been. Definitely would have been uphill. And, and that's, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you know, in talking about this, I think, um, you know, we'll, we'll run it back. We're gonna run another one here in a second because because we want to run multiple scenarios, right? But like, I think it's about we've talked about this on the lounge before. Of like, what are your key cards that you're trying to watch out for? You're a combo deck that relies on a spell, <laughs> so like. It's kind of one of those, you know, be be the problem kind of situations. I was a little bit worried that Derek was going to have the the Schrodinger's smile, oh, um, Schrodinger's cry, Schrodinger's cry. Yeah, um, yeah, for the tap down. I, I think you were still pretty good there because oh, yeah. you'd still be able to play the Shuren and you'd still hit yeah. him for another sixteen, so you'd be down to four. Which at that point yeah, in time, no. at that point in time, all you need is like a Yggdrasil's Grace or like anything else. Now, part of me, like I was even looking at a play line there, like it, tapping and using both Caduceus Will for that resistance, having that inner floating a will, uh, tapping a stone and then recovering it. So being on three will, then playing, playing the Caduceus, Caduceus. calling yep. a judgment and getting a stranger. And then like. I had like a play line, I think. Let me read the back side of this default phase. Default phase. I think I can remove an entity. Yeah. So I was gonna remove my own Adam Broly. No, I couldn't have done that. No, remove my own Ziz or my Shuruken or sh whatever, and then light and raise and revive it back and swing another one. Oh, again. the Shuren? Oh yeah. yeah. That's dead. That's most certainly a play line. RFG my stranger. And then light and raise and revive it. Oof, that would have got there too, man. Jeez, so, I mean, it's, like, it's amazing what you can do 
if you've been if you've spent many years as an aggro player like you just <laughs> you find lethal <laughs> that's all you're trained to do so you let's um lethal. let's run it with uh let's run it with dark alice on the play just so we see it from the opposite side uh, yeah 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 sure. so this is actually very good for me but i also i'm very vulnerable i think i just you know that first turn dark smile alice smile that smile yeah. for sure Smile is, um, I think in this format, I think there's only two discard spells that you're pretty actively using, and I think it's Smile, and I think it's Dark uh, Lapis Dark Storm. If, world. and I, I think it's D Lapis Dark Storm if you're Lapis. <laughs> like I think those are the only real discards that we're playing right now. End of the world. Is uh, so looking at this. End of the, okay. End of the world is not a discard spell. End of the world is a cool. The game's over. Like <laughs> actually, I do. Like Derek makes that card work. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, looking at this hand, I'm for sure getting rid of all four of these. I'll keep the resistance, and then, like I said, praying that we double up on either so, Velsavare, the addition, or the caduceus so let's let's talk about uh like the race and revise totally makes sense the getting rid of the genesis totally makes sense um yeah. let's talk about why we're getting rid of the cat the reason why we're getting rid of the cat is because we have a coin the most optimal thing that we can do on turn two is play our regalia turn one like the absolute best thing is like he Dark Alice smiles, looks at my hand. I'm like doubled up on resistance and doubled up on like my things, and I have a Nidhog because like the optimal turn for me is slam Caduceus, pass turn, resistance into Nidhog. Right. Like for sure. after they draw. So like by turn two, I'm looking at their five card hand and I'm ripping the two cards that they want to play. Yeah, out of for sure. Hand. That makes sense. Like it, so it, it me, makes I'm sense just, to me. I just wanted to talk. It, it made sense to me to get rid of it. I just wanted to talk through it for the sake of the stream. Kyran, Kyran is in the chat. Kyran, buddy, how's it going, buddy? My twin. You good to go? Kyran, I'm good to go. Kyran, you coming to Minneapolis, buddy? Calling some stones. Go ahead, buddy. Wow. Wow. Green, I mean, white, the that's, worst. That's interesting because my hand sucks. So, <laughs> uh, draw. Hey, Derek. Uh, remember when we said we weren't playing cat turn one? <laughs> <laughs> we lied. <laughs> I don't know if we lied. I I agree with you. I don't think we actually lied here. I think I think, I don't think we lied. I think there's a world where we accept what we're losing and we still yep. we still and just play it. we just play it on turn two. Yep. So Yes we do. Yes we do. I mean especially since we have that backup availability and if we need to we can start drawing pretty crazy later. I think you're absolutely right. You could also play the cat if you want to get greedy on your turn too. Uh, pass turn. For those of you who know what we're talking about, we're gonna wait draw. for Derek to draw here, and then we're gonna go ahead and before upkeep. Yeah, you just you you let me know if you're gonna try to recover. Uh, both to recover. Oh, are you? You're not gonna slam that dark Alice? Mm -hmm. All right. I still think you do it post recovery. I mean, I think I think actually the better situation to do it is post recover, like that's post recovery, post recovery, moving into main phase. Ah, sure. that's what I'm talking about. So like, Got it. he's there is a priority sequence, and here's an important yeah, yeah, yeah. thing. This is an important thing. Priority sequence at the start of main phase. No, there's a priority sequence before you leave recovery. So this is a very important thing for the stream to know. Let's talk about it. So in in Force of Will, priority sequences happen before the draw for the beginning of your turn, after the draw for the beginning of your turn, before you recover during your recovery phase, after you recover during your recovery phase, and then you enter the main timing of main phase. So. Okay. In this situation, the optimal play line here is to actually wait until he's recovered and attempting to move into main phase to cast what we're about to cast. Because if he has a response, it taps him out for the turn. Um, it doesn't let him recover. So, like, he's going to have a response either way. This makes it so that him having a response is actually worse for him. It costs that one will. Yeah. So no, this, right. is, this is the, one of the reasons why you saw people play Rachel's Smile. Like, like during that phase sometimes like you saw people do like other things like that um because yeah. will and anything go ahead it, it doesn't in that phase it doesn't like you're not if you tap it that will doesn't cease to exist 
Like it's already past that point in the recovery phase. Correct. Where will ceases to exist. So anything that you tap now after recovery does go into main phase. Correct. So, like, so he'll be able to use it. But the point is like if he had a one drop that he wanted you to not steal here, he would have to cast it now, which means he wouldn't yeah. have that stone for his main phase. So that's why this sequence is, is the, the, the really the only time in this game like this is a pretty niche situation to be perfectly honest because he only has the one stone primarily the only kind of times you want to be casting discard spells kind of like when we are is like in this exact situation or if your opponent is top decking like that's pretty much it so good Derek yeah in comes Nidhogg that's the first time I put a resistance in the graveyard wow that is a hand it is a hand looking at that hand i think we take that dark alice is why jeremy said what he said yes 100 percent. the dark alice is why or recovery then he would have had a free dark alice yep i think i think the takes here are in my opinion magic stance and the dark alice because smiles aren't going to do crap about a nidhog shadow swords master is not going to do anything this turn and Besteth by itself is garbage so like we're literally so setting I- we're literally setting Derek up to be able to play one card this turn which is dark alice's smile yeah which i think is why i want to rip both of those nah, i think you take the dark alice it's draw power after discard what are you doing so here's the thing wait what if he, if he kill if he cards. if he kills yeah, that discard if he gets that yeah. yeah so here's the thing if you rip don't rip that dark alice he's gonna he's gonna get a stone and then play that dark alice and get two cards you absolutely take that dark alice since he gave you the opportunity you have complete control over Derek's hand now going into his main phase he can't cast Bastet because he doesn't have any other entities it'll just bounce itself back to fucking hand he can cast at max mount one of those rachel smiles and you don't care and the shadow swords master is literally uncastable so you take the stance and the dark alice you have perfect knowledge of Derek's hand you go to your turn like okay i mean i'm fine i'm fine doing that but like here's my play line go is ahead. i have one resistance left in hand sure he rips that for me like i'm kind of up shit's crick uh, so like he would have to make a decision here. Like he's staring down a twelve twelve, correct? Um, that he currently doesn't have an answer for, correct? So his two will to save up for defense stance is just like honestly, if he chooses that play line, he's going to get chumped for twelve for the next X amount of turns till he decides to play a card, right? Um, he will he won't get a good defensive stance out of it. Um, this is here. Uh, then he is on one will. Uh, he still can't block the twelve twelve. Uh. He's digging, but frankly, you don't want um, me to dig. That is you don't want you don't want any you don't want having so having right. that knowledge of Derek's hand, <laughs> especially something like, having the knowledge of I'm Derek's like, hand being that he has literally zero interaction to be able to stop anything you want to do is what we're trying to go for here. So yeah. Like I'm that's that's why taking one of taking the stance so that you can literally go into your like you literally know that now Derek is going to call stone pass it like if he hits a black stone he's gonna smile you wait a minute he's he's if he hits a black stone he's gonna smile you if he doesn't hit a black stone you're fine but outside of casting that one copy of smile he's literally going call stone pass which goes into your turn and you just get to have free reign. So you want me to take Dark Alice and Defense Stains? Uh, personally, I'd be fine. You I mean, I could one of those Dark Alice mods. Why would you take one when he can only cast one max and you can he's still going to have one regardless? Okay. I'm with you. Right? Like he's going to have sure. he's going to have a copy of it either way. So like, meh. All right. I I think taking Defense Stance and Dark Alice is better. That's good. That's a good play line. I mean, and we can, we can talk about it after this match, right? That's the beauty of this is we can run it back. We're doing testing. But that would be my choices in this situation. It's not bad. Proceed to main phase. Derek hits second green white stone that he doesn't play. No, I play four. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Wait, seriously? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh shit! Sweet, the game's over. The, ga- the game's what? over. Like, <laughs> for the most part, yeah. Yeah, the game's 
game's pretty much oh yeah, geez, always, yeah the game's yeah. <laughs> now the game is really over right um you know i think you're you're playing a risk there like again to talk about as we walk through this like you're t you're playing a risk there but you know that he's going to take max one card and that he won't be able to do anything with that other that other stone so like yeah. that's why you can't take both because you don't want him to dig taking one is meaningless because he can just cast the other anyway and the defense stance means that like if he wants to cast the defense stance like in this situation he would be able to cast the defense stance um but now you just get to like play your caduceus for free get value off of it that way get a stranger get a one drop or you know draw a card and like now yeah. you're even further ahead from Derek, right yeah no it is definitely unwinnable from here that's for sure that's for sure to, to Lars in the chat, he's saying, if you cast Smile, you don't have follow-up for the next turns with two resistance gone. We don't really need follow-up when we're beating him over the head for 12. Um, and that's kind of, that's true. It's true. Um, but, like, in my mind, there was also kind of, I don't know. I didn't mind playing around cancel spells, but you're definitely right. Like, there, this, that play line could not have ended up better for me. Like, this game's over by turn two. I think you just, and you cast Caduceus. You cast Caduceus with literally no fear. Oh, yeah. The modes no, are. Just, if, if we're actually playing this out, then yeah, this is, this is this, this is a stranger. I mean, I don't really know what Derek's deck does, right? So I think we, for the sake of the stream and kind of walking it through, I think we walk it to life points being zero. Um, but, you know, I, I think Derek knows his deck maybe better than us. Um, <laughs> You know, is there something in there that if he, he is there something that he's top decking with this stone base that could possibly get him out of this situation? Right. That's the question. Like even regalia feels bad here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I guess reg yeah. I, I guess regalia feels OK because he can like play both the smiles then. But you're still like not really concerned about that. Uh, okay. Recovery good? Yep. Cost them. Hello to the almost 30 people hanging out with us tonight. This is clearly something people are liking. Smile. Uh, chase. Sure. Resistance. Resistance good. We'll counter it. Top Got deck it. to defense stance. But I think we're okay there, right? Because now we've tapped oh, yeah. him out. We've tapped him out. He steals a card. The only card he can literally hit. Oh, no, he can hit the stranger, right? So he. Uh, yeah, he can. He can hit the stranger. Oh, that's stranger. Sure. Yeah, so you can hit the five drop stranger. Well, I mean, it's either that that he can cast next turn. This ad can't hit the Anabrelli. He can still grace, which doesn't matter. Yeah, Yigger still grace doesn't and do anything right now. Graveyard stuff that's not doing anything to my graveyard, and then a cap. Yep. Which I mean, he's playing the cat that I'm fine, so we take the stranger. <laughs> Removed, right? Thanks, Matt Seymour. We're glad that we're we're glad you're enjoying it. We're, this is what we kinda wanted it to be. So I'll pass to you. Oh jeez. Oh, <laughs> why why would you call stone? Why would you call stone? Why wouldn't I? Why not I can't push any I can't push anything really with he's... judgment right now. Isn't judgment that you have to remove an entity too? Yeah. No, yeah, I it do. is. Oh, that's true. Well, you oh, just right. you just you, just you hit the defense stance, which you don't want to do. You hit the you hit your own addition, which you don't give a shit about. I'm not really in a position like like there's there's really no threat here. Sure, that's I fair. Like calling, I like having more mana than my opponent. So that's fair. Right. That's fair. Unless you have lethal off of a judgment. Yeah, which I don't. Right. It, it would be RNG. It would. It, it would, would be. be uh, it would be RNG. randomized. It would be a truly randomized situation, right? So swing twelve. Ouchies. So, like again, we have perfect knowledge of Derek's hand. Like, what is the top deck here that's concerning? Like, meh. Especially having the Yggdrasil's Grace. The Yggdrasil's Grace is maybe not super great. Like, if he happens to have, draw into a removal spell. Um, I mean, he gets to take two more cards. There are two different cards. I two guess. different cards, right? But you do get an opportunity to cast the Dark Alice then, which is not great. True. Uh, but then he get, but then he gets to look at what you Dark Alice like. It, it's like yeah. it, it, this situation feels fine with what we took. This situation feels fine. 
So here's an interesting conversation that I want to have with you guys since we're playing Dark Alices, right? Um, so here's a situation, and Derek, maybe this speaks to your your list is playing four Dark Alices, right, Derek? I would imagine. See. So has there been a situation in your brain? Oh my gosh, has there been a situation <laughs> in your brain where that's just game? Like that's just the yeah, end of the float, game. uh, float red <laughs> Um. Has there been a situation yeah, sure. in this game where you um, have thought about sacrificing, flashing in a dark Alice in advance of a mythic trigger? Mm -hmm. Have you done that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. It, hell, back in the day, we were regalia breaking in response to <laughs> yeah just trigger. just to get an extra draw, draw card. card. <laughs> that's it's just something that's come. I haven't been playing too much. Um, dark alice as much um just because of the stuff that we're doing on the channel trying to focus on it um but i was just kind of like oh wait it's a trigger it's just sitting on the field it's an entity uh, you can use the resistance question mark he's got the resistance in hand show it well you show it to me show I it adam brawley like what the fuck <laughs> i saw pay two men i play adam brawley with my regalia i was like um excuse me <laughs> sorry yeah no it's good yeah you got it yeah, so uh, playline there, uh, Barbados uh, swung for seven, played Adam Broly off that recovered stone, used recovered stone for Yig to show grace for another six. So. Yep. And I don't think, so I don't think we have to, we don't think have to run it back. I think I do kind of want to talk about, in my mind, the way that we were playing this Ouroboros deck, um, this, this like 12 Apostles deck against Dark Alice. Um, it's... While we haven't had too many events that have been New Frontiers with Dark Alice, the general consensus is that Dark Alice is probably the control variant. Like, she's probably the most, like, controlly deck that we're going to see. Uh, and so when you're playing a as a combo deck against the control deck, like, the game plan becomes make the control deck sweat as early as possible. Which I think is why, you know, I talked about trying to get around the Kaguya to force the 2020. So then, like, he had to, he was sitting on three will and he was either like, oh shit, like, I have to try to answer this 2020 now, tap out as the control deck against a combo deck, or sit and wait and hope it pays off, right? Which is a really bad situation for a control deck to be in. Um, you know, same thing with like right here of seeing that one stone white stone and kind of what we took. The purpose here was to tell the control, like, the purpose here in making the control deck sweat is that, like, we gained perfect knowledge of that control deck's hand so that, like, the control deck can't try to pull any fast ones on us. It's just like, okay, we are pushing pressure into your face, and we know that you don't have an answer for this. So, like, you don't overextend yourself, and you get into a situation where the control deck is on the back foot. As a as a control as a combo deck or even as an aggro deck, any time in the early game where you can put the control deck on the back foot, that's what you're shooting for, right? Uh, and so you know that's that's kind of why I think we chose the play lines that we did. Um, and so you got to kind of look at that. And I think the early game mulligan decisions, kind of talking about that too, is kind of what you know you're looking for, Derek. From your perspective, you know, kind of being where you were. When you're playing up against, you know, to see the opposite other side of the table, right? When you're playing this Dark Alice control deck and you see you're sitting down across Lenneth, like, what are some of the things that you're thinking of to, like, try to mull for, try to look out for, that kind of stuff? Mm. So whenever I see Lenneth, I always think of resistance. But mainly the thing that I'm keeping in mind is, like, just the Ouroboros OTK. Sure. Um, so definitely finding uh, some sort of removal. Is always nice. Um, if I can find Schrodinger's, like they at least kind of help. Um, but you know, if, if your opponent ends up having just resistance, Ouroboros, and Raisin Revive, like you, the, the just you got God at that point, right? Um, so uh, yeah, removal is a big thing. Um, discard is the other big thing. Uh, if you you know prevent them from actually just doing what they want to be doing, then you know you're in a good spot. Um, but yeah, with the, with the deck that I'm running, um, it was more of a, uh, as you mentioned, like a control deck. This is like more so a Kaguya deck than yeah. it isn't. Um, like it, it does play like the potential for the combo. Like I have Ray, I have Sigurd, like I have my Schrodingers. So like sometimes I can just, you know, crap out a bunch of Schrodingers and be like, all right, next turn you're dead unless you have an answer for these. 
Um, and then other times it's just like, oh, you're trying to play the slow game. And it's like, oh, well, I have a counter for that. I have a counter for that. And, you know, and you just get to spend like turn after turn countering your stuff. And then when I need to refill my hand, you know, I just drop this big 15 15 on your head. And then it's just like, ah, draw my entire deck again. And then, you know, get to play that game. Yeah, for sure. I think but, that's, I think that's one of the things that Shadow yeah, Swords cards, Master, but... I think that's one of the things that Shadow Swords Master brings to the table for the control shell is like, oh, I'm out of cards. Uh, now I'm not. <laughs> like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, and, so and, yeah. <laughs> like while also putting a 15 15 body on board um for sure especially so since dumb. she banishes at resolution <laughs> yeah so it's just like, yeah. uh enter and it's like ah oh, jeez what do i do here uh do do these things it's like ah oh, cool all right i'm gonna draw cards instead i don't care about your resonators anymore <laughs> <laughs> right <Yeah>. exactly <laughs> that utility right so do we want to do another one uh no i think we're good for right now i think that was a good kind of walkthrough for our first lever lesson planning here you know i think the like i said the, the key kind of methodology here is like we said is if you're the deck playing against a control shell um it's what can you do you know i'm gonna kick us back to like looking at us instead of the the thing i'm gonna stop watching this go back to the grid view I found it. And then it. Doop, doop. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think <laughs> there it is. Um I think this is, you know, one of those things where if you're if you're the deck going against a control deck and you're not a control mirror, um, you know, it's kind of like what are the things that you can do to make the control deck have to pay will when it doesn't want to be? Um, I think that's a big, you know, the big lesson is like when when can you capitalize on them being on low will and what can you do to safely set up to force them to have low will? Because um, I think any time that a control deck doesn't have more will than its opponent on its opponent's turn, a control deck feels weird. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's okay. different, it's different for the dark Alice deck because it has Bastet. it has, uh, to be able to kind of do some shenanigans there. It has, um, dark Alice for some quick draw. It has things like shadow X if they're playing it. Um, we didn't see Derek, we didn't see Derek draw into any of them, but if it's playing it, those kinds of things. So it's not like they're completely out of luck, but it is a matter of, you know, we, I feel like in both of those games, Derek felt uncomfortable game two and three, or, or like turn two and three. Like if we were playing in a tournament and I was playing this deck and that went that way, like I feel like I would have a good sense that Derek felt uncomfortable with those play lines, um, which is what you, you also had enough time to get lunch. You also definitely would have had enough time to get lunch <laughs> at a tournament. Best matches. At a, at, a, at a tournament for sure. Um, and you know, this is, this is just one specific matchup. Like that's the one, the thing that I want to take people, you know, to notice from this, um, is this lesson planning is designed to show you very one specific matchup. It is one specific match. It is not meant to replace your testing. It is instead supposed to help you plan for your testing. It is designed to help you go, okay, now I have a sense of what this matchup, like what I need to be trying to do in this matchup so that when I'm trying it out myself, I have a launching point. Um, you know, that's kind of, we're planning for the for the teaching lesson. This is not testing. This is helping you get ready for testing. Um, because these are both decks that you could play at a GP. These are both decks that you could see at a GP. We have a GP in a month. <laughs> like, you know that's that's something. It's almost here. It's almost here. You know, uh, I'm as much as I I've, I'm thankful for Derek being willing to play Dark Alice on stream. I'm also kind of grateful we didn't get to see a ton of his deck because I know that he's you know this might be a deck that Derek wants to play. So. Oh no no but see so after doing like pre 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 preliminary testing, uh, this deck doesn't beat combo decks. And uh, spoiler alert, GP Minnesota, there's probably going to be combo decks. So what? No. I'll, I'll leave sure. it there. What? <laughs> hmm. In case you didn't hmm. know, hmm. That's, Ins insert that's... slow poke meme here. <laughs> that's very, very fair. <laughs> this just in. This just in. Lots of combo decks. Um, Crazy but, works. 
But this is this is the close of our kind of first episode of lesson planning. Uh, we had pretty consistently over 20 people, almost 30 people hanging out with us tonight. So clearly this is something that people are interested in. Uh, even, you know, I've had some people commenting in the chat. So for those of you who were talking in the chat, awesome. Um, you know, we might do a couple more of these where we do uh, the chat being open to everybody. We decided to open I I decided to open up the chat. Uh, to everybody just to get things started. Um, if there is a matchup that you would want to see lesson planned, um, consider joining as a member. We're going to add some perks here the coming week uh, to potentially um, make it so that members can suggest our lesson planning. You can build the curriculum here at Ruler School uh, for what we're going to start Stay working on. Brand, on. Stay, Stay on brand. brand. Stay on. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm wearing the off brand stuff. I'm, wear, I'm, I'm wearing the DMO 73 gaming stuff. Um, absolutely ridiculous how could you how, how could i um but we hope you guys enjoyed it uh and so um classes tomorrow so go get some sleep and this has been myself jeremy franklin and i've been joined by mike rance who's been building conqueror decks in the background uh our dark alice pilot Derek muguneza and our leneth pilot uh josh crack pack crack and patton and we'll see you all we'll see you all next week so until then class dismissed <laughs>